Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro, and by the end of this video, you'll have installed Python, C++, Java, JavaScript, and more on your iPad. On a Windows PC, on a Chromebook, on any tablet, and even on your smartphone. So I'm a computer scientist, and I love programming. I wish that everybody had a chance to do coding. But what I've noticed is that the hardest part of my job is just downloading the software. As a professional, it sometimes takes me weeks to just get the software working. I feel like a lot of beginners give up because they don't know where to start or they can't figure out how to download a programming language. So wouldn't it be amazing if everything you needed to be a programmer was in one place and if that was super easy to install on any device? Well, in the last few years, two new revolutionary technologies have made this possible, and I would like to show you how this is done. But first, let's take a look at the software. So when you first open the application, it'll look like this. So if you click the button that says new on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that the software allows you to program in a ton of languages. To see what programming looks like, let's take a look at a software that I've been working on. So here we see a Python application that I wrote. I'm replicating some software called Cytoscape, which is used a lot in biology. But for me, it's really fun to see what else it can be used for. Now, we can also look at the source code that was used to create this application. One really cool thing about this software that makes writing code a lot easier is that you can actually see the little pieces of the application as you're writing it. For instance, this color box right here is the same color box right here. So what actually is this software that allows you to write professional code in all these different languages? When we look at the top of the screen, we see two different softwares, one called Jupyter and one called IO, which is kind of confusing. So you can think of Jupyter as being the original software. It's what allows you to do programming in this really cool new way. There's a ton of programmers just like me who are using Jupyter to create amazing new ideas. And IO is just one version of Jupyter. It's the version that I created. So I took the Jupyter software and then pieces of software that other people wrote and then finally combined them together with my own ideas to create IO. The goal of IO is to make it really easy to create professional programs in any language, and then to be able to share those programs with everyone else in the Jupyter community. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, didn't he just say that he stole Jupyter's code and the code of other programmers? That's not okay. Well, in computer science, stealing actually is okay. In fact, people really like it when you steal their code. So no matter who you are, whenever you write a program, you are writing your program on top of the code that other people wrote before you. And then in the future, people might take bits and pieces of your program to build their own applications. When you start programming, you become part of a larger community of programmers that are working together to build the future. All right, let's download this software on any device. But first you might be wondering, how is that even possible? Remember that there are two new technologies that make this happen. The first is Jupyter, and the second is cloud computing. You may have noticed that when I was showing you what IO can do, it was all happening inside of a website. And you can go to a website on any device. So that makes it really easy, right? You just go to whatever this really weird website is, and then you do all of your programming there. Well, not quite. So you don't go to a website. What we're gonna do is launch a website, and then we're gonna do all of our programming there. And this might sound really hard to do, but it turns out it's really easy, and that's because of the magic of cloud computing. So when you do cloud computing, none of the coding actually happens on your device. Instead, it happens on a Jupyter website that's running on a computer that's in the cloud. Your own device is more just like a video game controller that's used to control the Jupyter website that's on the cloud. In our case, we're gonna be using Google Cloud. So to get this software, we're gonna launch a Jupyter website on Google Cloud, and this allows us to do our programming on whatever device we want. So the first step is to go to Google Cloud, and you can find the website at cloud.google.com, or you can just Google Google Cloud. Then you click the Try Free button. 
You sign in using your Gmail account. Now, it'll ask for your credit card, but the first year is totally free. And even after that, you won't be charged anything until you click a few extra buttons. Google made it really safe. When you finish signing up, you'll come to the Google Cloud homepage, which will look something like this. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the Options button, and this shows you everything that Google Cloud can do. So Google Cloud lets you do some amazing things, like launch an entire supercomputer from scratch. But we're going to keep it really simple and just launch the IO software on a regular computer. The first step is to scroll down to Container Registry, and then to click that button. Then click Images. Then click Enable Container Registry API. What this does is it allows you to launch a little pre-built computer in a box, which has all of the IO software already on it. Now we're going to go to the spot where we launch this pre-made computer. We do that by clicking Options and then scrolling up until we see Compute Engine. Click Compute Engine and then click VM Instances. This is the place where we launch the pre-made computer. When Compute Engine is ready, click Create. This brings us to a page where we decide the settings for our new computer. Let's first give our computer a name. I'm going to name my computer My First IO. Next, click the Deploy a Container Image checkbox. This is where we add the pre-made computer. In Container Image, we're going to type the name of this computer, which is gcr.io slash pupster 900 slash IO. Now click Advanced Container Options and check the three boxes that are there. In boot disk, we're going to decide the size of our computer's hard drive. Click Change. Then you probably want to give your computer at least 30 gigabytes. Then change your computer from a persistent disk to an SSD drive. This makes the computer run faster. Finally, click the Allow Full Access to Cloud APIs button, and then under Firewall, click Allow HTTP Traffic and Allow HTTPS Traffic. This allows our computer to act as a website. Now, if you click Create, you'll have a Jupyter website that looks just like this. But first, you probably want to create a password. This stops people you don't want from accessing the computer. Under Command, type tiny, spelled T-I-N-I, then click Add Argument, then type minus G, then add another argument and type password, all lowercase, then click Add Argument, and now you type the password. When you choose your password, it can't have any quotation marks or any spaces, so a password you could use is hello with a capital H, 123, exclamation mark. Okay. Now let's create our computer. So congratulations, you just launched your first website. It will take about 10 to 15 minutes to spin up though. All right, it's been about 15 minutes and now our website is ready to go. So where is our website? Well, the numbers under external IP is the name of our website. So let's click that. Then change the name of the website from HTTPS to HTTP and click Enter. Now all we have to do is type our password from before. And then we're in. To check that IO is working, let's type some code. Click the New button and then click Python 3 to create a new Python 3 file. You'll know that the file is ready to go when the circle on the right goes from white to gray. You can see that we can type some basic Python commands now. Another cool thing you can do is organize your code with headings. Jupyter makes it really easy to build programs. To prove it, let's build an application. But let's get crazy. Let's do it on our phone. Now, when you use your phone, you're still going to need a keyboard. But in the United States, you can find some really good Bluetooth keyboards for just $15. All right, so now I'm on my phone and I just went to the website that we were at before. So the first thing we do is download the Jupyter software that makes building programs easy. We're gonna build an interactive program where someone can write some text and then that text will be printed to the screen a few times. Let's call this program that we write, print it. 
Then we just have to write the one line of code that makes this happen. Now you see that there's a program that does exactly what I said. So you might think that professional programming on a smartphone is ridiculous, but for a lot of people on this planet, this is the only computer they have. Also, I made an application called IO Online, which makes it really easy to share the code that you write with everybody else who uses IO. You can also easily turn any application you write into a website that anyone can go to. I'm going to show these in later tutorials, but the point is that for the first time, anyone can change the world with just a phone. And talking about the world, one thing that really surprised me was to see people from so many different countries watching my videos. And that's beautiful, but it got me thinking, what if I'm not the best teacher? So what I did is I made all of my videos open source. So what does that mean? Well, you know how stealing is good for computer science? Well, I believe stealing is good for teaching too. So you can take this video and then you can replace my face in this little box with yours. And then you can be the person that teaches the people in your country how to program. I should also mention that anyone can add subtitles to these videos as well. I also really have to thank everyone for all the comments that they've been writing on YouTube. When I started this, I thought I was just going to do Python on an iPad. But then people asked me what other languages they could use and what other devices is this possible on. And that got me to add all these extra features to my software. One of the main goals of this channel is to give everybody who programs on Jupiter a voice. And even as a beginner, you can make a big difference by telling me what you want and what ideas you have with this software. And finally, all of my software is free, so I'm not making any money from this, and the only way I can continue is through your support. So if you believe in these programming tutorials or in the software that we're building together, then please donate. I'll put a link to my Patreon page in the description. All right, if you like the video, hit like and subscribe, and definitely leave your thoughts in the comments. This is Elliot the iPad Pro. See you guys next video.